Hello, my dear students. Now we shall be talking about an interesting uh, topic in cardiovascular system that is infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis is an infection that causes vegetations onto the endocardium. Most friable vegetations are seen in infective endocarditis with high risk of embolization. Infective endocarditis is due to microbial infection of a heart valve, native or prosthetic, a lining of a cardiac chamber or blood vessel, or a congenital anomaly like atrial septal defect or septal defects per se. The causative organism is usually a bacterium, but may be a rickettsia, chlamydia or a fungus. Infective endocarditis can be classically divided into native valve endocarditis, prosthetic valve endocarditis and importantly endocarditis in intravenous drug abusers. Mitral valve is commonly involved followed by aortic valve in native valve endocarditis. Very frequently asked MCQs which is the valve which is most commonly involved in intravenous drug abusers. Answer. Mitral valve is commonly involved followed by aortic valve in native valve endocarditis. Aortic valve prosthesis are more likely to be involved than mitral valve prosthesis. So if it is a prosthetic involvement then aortic valve prosthesis are more likely involved in infective endocarditis in comparison to mitral valve prosthesis. Infective endocarditis occurs at sites of pre-existing endocardial damage but infection with virulent or aggressive organisms like Staphylococcus aureus can cause endocarditis in a previously normal heart also. Staphylococcal endocarditis of tricuspid valve is a common complication of intravenous drug misuse. Again an important point which we should take care of. Staphylococcal endocarditis of tricuspid valve is a common complication of intravenous drug misuse. Many cardiac lesions are vulnerable to endocarditis, particularly areas of endocardial damage caused by a high pressure jet of blood, such as left side of the heart in ventricular septal defect. You can understand if there is ventricular septal defect because of the great pressure gradient between the left ventricle and the right, right ventricle, right, there would be a jet of blood. And when this jet of blood will, will go and pierce the endocardium, small abrasion or small defect would be produced out there. Platelets and fibrin will come, will deposit out here, further it will get colonized by the bacteria and the vegetations or the colonies would be formed. Simple. So I repeat, many cardiac lesions are vulnerable to endocarditis, particularly areas of endocardial damage caused by a high pressure jet of blood such as left side of the heart in VSD, valvular incompetence as mitral regurgitation or aortic regurgitation and importantly distal to constriction in coarctation of aorta. In all of this condition, I have seen an MCQ framed. So just take care of this. It is less common in sites with small pressure gradient as atrial septal defect. Most of the time an MCQ would be framed as that infective endocarditis will be seen in VSD, coarctation of aorta, blah and ASD. Now ASD definitely you can understand the pressure gradient in ASD because the pressure difference in the both the atria will be less. So infective endocarditis would be less commonly seen in sites with small pressure gradient as ASD. So ASD is the knockout choice in this condition. So I repeat ASD is a low risk lesion for development of infective endocarditis. Infection tends to occur at sites of endothelial damage because they attract deposits of platelets and fibrin that are vulnerable to colonization by blood-borne organisms. The avascular valve tissue and presence of fibrin and platelets aggregate help to protect proliferating organism from host defense mechanism because the valve tissue is avascular and there is presence of fibrin and platelets and because of this the organisms can proliferate and can get escaped from the host defense mechanisms. When the infection is established, vegetation grow and may become large enough to cause obstruction or embolism. Adjacent tissues are destroyed and abscesses may form. Valve regurgitation may develop or increase if the effective valve is damaged by tissue distortion, cusp perforation or disruption of caudi tendon. Extra cardiac manifestations such as ves vasculitis and skin lesions are due to emboli or immune complex preposition. Mycotic aneurysms may develop in the arteries 
or at the site of infected emboli at autopsy infarction of the spleen and kidneys and sometimes an immune glomerulonephritis can be found now we will be talking about the microbiology what are the microorganisms which are involved with this condition most of the cases are due to streptococci or staphylococci please remember these two important organisms strepto and staphylo the viridans group of streptococci are commensals in the upper respiratory tract and as we all know they are less pathogenic that may enter the blood stream at the time of dental treatment and are common causes of subacute endocarditis on deformed heart valves please try to understand if the organism is of less virulence it will attack a portion of the endocardium which is already damaged before but if the organism is of high virulence yes it can infect the normal areas of the endocardium also so as it goes more virulent pathogens as staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus pneumoniae can infect normal valves please remember these two points from mcq point of view other organisms including enterococcus faecalis enterococcus faecum and streptococcus bovis may enter the blood from the bowel or urinary tract Staphylococcus aureus has now overtaken streptococci as the most common cause of acute endocarditis you can definitely uh, presume uh, an mcq uh, uh, very rightly framed on this question staph aureus has now overtaken streptococci as the most common cause of acute endocarditis if we talk about endocarditis in drug abusers in iv drug abusers drug abusers with endocarditis they are commonly young males skin is the frequent source of infection with Staphylococcus aureus being the commonly associated bacteria important Staphylococcus aureus the commonly associated bacteria tricuspid valve is involved in most of the cases very important point for an mcq tricuspid valve is involved in most of the cases pulmonary emboli or pneumonia is common in tricuspid valve endocarditis you can understand if there is vegetation in tricuspid valve with the forward flow they can go further and can lead to pulmonary embolism or pneumonia can you see this important point murmurs are frequently absent so this is a very characteristic feature which is seen in uh, iv drug drug abusers who are suffering from infective endocarditis that murmurs are frequently absent in this condition again a very important point from mcq point of view staph aureus is a highly virulent and invasive organism usually producing florid vegetations leading to rapid valve destruction and abscess formation Now we will be talking few words about post operative endocarditis. Post operative endocarditis after cardiac surgery may affect native or prostatic valves. The most common organism is a coagulous negative staph epidermidis, a normal skin commensal which is introduced during the peri operative period. So if in an MCQ they ask about a post operative endocarditis please remember that the most important pathogen which is associated with this is a coagulous negative staphylococcus most commonly staph epidermidis in q fever endocarditis due to coxilla burnetii the patient often has history of contact with farm animals the aortic valve is usually affected and there may be hepatic complications and purpura so if they are talking about post operative endocarditis there are two important points which you have to remember first the causative organism being a coagulous negative staph uh, staphylococcus and secondly which is the valve which is most commonly affected yes the aortic valve lifelong antibiotic therapy may be required in such cases now we come to the clinical features endocarditis can occur as an acute or a more insidious subacute form subacute endocarditis when a patient with congenital or valvular heart disease suddenly develops fever this could be initially mild also complaints of malaise loss of appetite night sweat weight loss you should start thinking something in terms of infective endocarditis fever is present in all cases except in cases with renal failure or congestive cardiac failure so fever would be absent in such cases importantly an mcq can be formed out here arthralgias are very common cardiac murmurs are always present except in early endocarditis less often it can present as an embolic stroke or peripheral arterial embolism Other features of infective endocarditis includes pur- purpura and petechial hemorrhages in the skin and mucous membranes and splinter hemorrhages under the finger nails or toe nails. Importantly, MCQ ocular nodes are painful tender swellings at the fingertips that are probably 
a product of vasculitis or emboli to distal digital arteries. So, ostler nodes are commonly seen with infective endocarditis. Digital clubbing is a late sign. The spleen is frequently pal palpable. In coxilla infections, the spleen and the liver may be considerably enlarged. And microscopic hematuria is common. Splenomegaly and petechi is commonly seen as I have already said. Splinter hemorrhages are subungual dark red streaks seen in endocarditis commonly after trauma. Rot spots are oval retinal hemorrhages with clear pale center. Then you get Janeway lesions. What are Janeway lesions? They are small, non tender, hemorrhagic lesions seen in palms and soles. Janeway lesions. So, ostler nodes, rot spots, Janeway lesions are all seen in infective endocarditis, important from MCQ point of view. Mycotic aneurysms are seen in around 10% of the cases. It leads to formation of friable vegetation that may embolize to systemic circulation, rarely in left atria. See, why I have put, up, put forward this point? Because when I was brow uh, browsing through a uh, few MCQs which has been asked in, in, in infective endocarditis, in one, in one of the MCQs they have, they have mentioned that these vegetations can go to atria. So that's wrong because if, if the vegetation is there in the mitral valve, because of the forward flow of the blood, there are more chances that it will go into the systemic circulation rather than going back. So this going back part becomes a part of accept. So this is again important from how would you be uh, tapping uh, uh, this question once you are answering an MCQ. So it leads to formation of friable vegetations that may embolize to systemic cir circulation rarely back into the left atria. Neurologic manifestations are commonly seen with left-sided endocarditis with Steph aureus infection. Please note my dear students, myocardial abscesses occur commonly with Staphylococcus aureus endocarditis. As you all know, Staphylococcus aureus is an organism with high virulence rate, right? So myocardial abscesses occur commonly with S. aureus endocarditis. Conduction defect may arise from ventricular septal invasion secondary to extension from aortic valve. Echocardiography. I repeat, echocardiography is helpful in diagnosis of myocardial abscess and surgery is often indicated. Renal disease may result due to renal emboli which may lead to renal insufficiency. Now, the investigations. What are the investigations which we should be doing to diagnose a case of infective endocarditis? There are certain lab criteria and other criteria also which we will be seeing later. Critical diagnostic finding in endocarditis is bacteremia, that is bacteria in systemic circulation. Blood culture is positive in around 95% of the cases and is the crucial investigation because it may identify the infection and can guide the antibiotic therapy. 3 to 6 sets of blood culture should be taken prior to commencing therapy and importantly you should not wait for episodes of pyrexia. So timing here is not important that you should uh, you should be waiting for fever to come and at that only point of time you want to withdraw blood. No, in this condition, all right, you should not wait for episodes of pyrexia and the bloods can be collected accordingly. Arterial blood or bone marrow offers no advantage over venous blood. So you can collect venous blood also and aerobic and anaerobic cultures both are required. Echocardiography, my dear friends, echocardiography is the key for detecting and following the progress of vegetations, for assessing valve damage and for detection of abscess formation. The ECG may show the development of AV block due to aortic root abscess formation and occasionally there could be infarction because of embolization. The chest x-ray may show evidence of cardiac failure and Cardiomegaly. Now we will be talking about modified Duke's criteria which is used for diagnostic of infective endocarditis. A clinical diagnosis of endocarditis can be made on the presence of two major or one major and three minor or five minor criteria. I repeat two major, one major and three minor or five minor criteria. Now let's see what are the major criteria and what are the minor criteria. Yes. Major criteria, importantly, as I have as I've said earlier, bacteremia, the, the critical sign, right? So, major criteria, positive blood culture. Yes, positive blood culture. Typical organism from two cultures. 
Persistent positive blood cultures taken more than 12 hours apart. Three or more positive cultures taken over one hour apart. There is endocardial involvement. Positive echocardiographic findings of vegetations. You can detect vegetations by doing an echocardiography or new valvular regurgitation which comes. Now let's see what are the minor criteria. Predisposing valvular or cardiac abnormality. Intravenous drug misuse, pyrexia of equal to or more than 38 degrees centigrade, embolic phenomena, vasculitic phenomena, blood cultures, suggestive organism growth but not achieving the major criteria, suggestive echocardiographic findings. These all encompasses the minor criteria. Now we come to how we should treat such cases. The case fatality of bacterial endocarditis is approximately 20%. So here you can understand uh, how serious we should be in initiating and continuing the treatment. The case fatality is approximately 20% in those with prosthetic valve endocarditis and those infected with resistant microorganisms. Cure of endocarditis requires eradication of all microorganisms from the vegetation. Complete eradications of microorganisms from the vegetation. Microbicidal drug regimen must be used in enough concentration and for enough duration to sterilize the vegetation. My dear friends, please note, I have used two important words, enough concentration and enough duration. Any source of infection should be removed as soon as possible. For example, a tooth with apical abscess should be extracted. If the presentation is acute, flucloxacillin and gentamicin are recommended, while for a subacute presentation, benzyl penicillin and gentamicin are preferred. In those with penicillin allergy, a prosthetic valve or a suspected methicillin resistant step aureus that is MRSA, triple therapy with vancomycin, gentamicin and oral rifampicin should be considered. A short that is a two week treatment regimen may be sufficient for fully sensitive strain of streptococcus viridens and streptococcus bovis if there is no evidence of thromboembolic disease. No vegetation of more than 5 mm in diameter along with no adverse prognostic factor. So if these three things are absent, you can have a short uh, duration of treatment that is 2 weeks regimen for Streptococcus viridens and Streptococcus bovis. For the empirical treatment of bacterial endocarditis, penicillin plus gentamicin is the regimen of choice for most patients. When staphylococcal infection is suspected, vancomycin plus Gentamicin is recommended. Cardiac surgery which includes debridement of infected material and valve replacement is advisable in a substantial proportion of patients particularly those with staph aureus or fungal infections. You know why? Because staph aureus yes, it's a, it's a very virulent organism. So you have to go for surgical interventions. Antimicrobial therapy must be started before surgery. In medicine, it is usually said prevention is better than cure. So how can the part be complete uh, without talking about prevention? Until recently, antibiotic prophylaxis was routinely given to patient at risk of infective endocarditis undergoing interventional procedures. However, as this has not been proven to be effective and the link between episodes of infective endocarditis and interventional procedures has not been demonstrated, importantly, please note Antibiotic prophylaxis is no longer routinely offered for defined interventional procedures. Initially, when we used to study or even you know when our seniors used to teach us, they used to say that for every interventional procedure, uh, prophylactic treatment with uh, antibiotics is necessary. But my dear students, things have changed and this is the dynamics of medicine that nowadays it has, it has not been proven to be effective. And the link between episodes of infective endocarditis and interventional procedures has not been demonstrated. So, antibiotic prophylaxis is no longer offered routinely for defined interventional procedures. It is to be given in certain cardiac lesions as, now here comes uh, uh, important point again from MCQ point of view that, ru that routinely is not given. But there are certain conditions where we have to give prophylaxis and you can definitely understand that an examiner will be smart enough to frame an MCQ putting these important points like it is to be given if the patient has prosthetic heart valves, if the patient has suffered from previous episode of endocarditis, there is mitral valve prolapse with holosystolic murmur. 
माइट्रल वैल प्रोलैप्स विथ होलोसिस्टोलिक मोमो परसिस्टेंट डक्टस आर्टीरियोसिस कोऑप्टेशन ऑफ एटा एसिमेट्रिक सेप्टल हाइपोट्रॉफी सर्जिकली कंस्ट्रक्टेड सिस्टमिक पल्बोनरी शांड्स Now please recall, I have already said at the starting of my presentation that when any lesion which is producing a jet, you know, it is damaging the endocardium and it and this area gets prone for deposition of platelets and fibrins and ultimately colonization and vegetation is produced. Please see in all these conditions a high jet is produced, like in PDA, in coarctation of aorta, asymmetric septal hypertrophy, and surgically constructed systemic pulmonary shunts. So in these conditions, we are giving. prophylaxis for infective endocarditis what are the antibiotics used in prophylaxis see i have changed the color of this important uh, antibiotic because uh, uh, n number of mcqs has been framed on this uh, particular antibiotic oral amoxicillin my dear students is the standard drug of choice for antibiotic prophylaxis for oral cavity procedures in adults at moderate to high risk of infective endocarditis so please remember oral amoxicillin in high risk cases ampicillin can be added intramuscularly or intravenously plus gentamicin an important mcq if the patient is allergic to penicillin what is to be given cefazolin may be used if patient is allergic to penicillin for genito urinary procedures ampicillin with gentamicin can be used vancomycin with gentamicin can be used for patient allergic to penicillin yes libman sex endocarditis students why i have kept this slide you know When I was uh, uh, going through uh, the MCQs, I have seen many MCQs uh, in which Lipman sex endocarditis has been mentioned as one of the uh, option. So I thought it would be prudent if I uh, include this slide also in the infective endocardi uh, endocarditis presentation. Lipman sex endocarditis it is characteristic endocardial lesion of systemic lupus erythematosus, which is described by Lipman and Sack. It consists of wart-like lesions. Mostly located at the angles of the AV valve. Now, this was the thing which was been asked in the MCQ. Please understand: if it is Lipman sex endocarditis, it is the the vegetations are located at the angles of the AV valve or on the ventricular surface of the mitral valve. So, this was the point uh, uh, which I wanted uh, to highlight so that uh, it will be easier for you when you will be solving an MCQ. It can also be seen in the pockets of valves. Again, an important point. Uh, vegetations in the pocket of valves is seen in Lipman sex endocarditis and hemodynamically significant regurgitation is rare thank you